have always considered myself a prepared person. And yet, every March, when I go from Houston to New York to visit, I inevitably end up in the same scene, on an endless taxi line outside LaGuardia Airport without a coat and worse, without socks. Now, I have no excuse. I grew up, lived and worked in New York, and I know it is a full two seasons colder than Houston. March in Houston, flip-flops. March in New York, snow on the ground. So what is my excuse? Is it a lack of experience? No. A lack of data? No. Is it a lack of awareness? Yes. Being human and not a robot, if an experience or a threat is not in my immediate or recent line of sight, I don't always shift my path. Now, overlooking one's socks, minor discomfort. Overlooking an environmental or biologic threat, global catastrophe. And there are some events so large, unforeseen, they leave us regretting that we didn't check the weather. They leave us unprepared. The first time I experienced this, September 11th, 2001, I was working at a hospital in New York City, rounding on patients, when I saw the billowing gray plumes of smoke emerging from two unmistakable buildings. And the smell that soon arose burnt steel, concrete, plastic paper, unforgettable. As a physician, I will never forget that feeling of being trained and ready, yet completely helpless, because no one came. And years later, after relocating to Houston and multiple hurricanes, floods, and a pandemic, I would have that feeling again. We have one of the best medical centers in the world here, but it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter if people can't get there. So how do we prepare for the unpredictable? And is it so unpredictable after all? Later, the 9-11 Commission would call that tragedy a, quote, failure of imagination. Failure of imagination. Those are powerful words, and one might argue that they apply to the current pandemic as well. We had the capabilities, we could have prepared, but we didn't. But what if we treated health security the way we now treat national security? What if we prepared for a health threat the way the military prepares for potential conflict? Well, I would argue that we need to do so because the cost of not doing this is too great. If we look at American lives lost in the current pandemic, it exceeds that of the last 150 years of war, which includes two world wars. And this number, by the way, is rising. And despite this, government spending on health security remains a fraction of overall defense, literally a sliver. So we have a lot of room for improvement and to be more proactive, and we need to be, because health threats are real and they're increasing. Today, I'm going to talk about four, a four ways, or rather four A's, with which we can improve health security. Accept adapt, act, and advocate. We need to accept that these threats are real and rising. We need to adapt our behaviors. We need to act to facilitate better prevention and preparation and advocate for real change. And together, if we do this, we can prepare for the next threat and the next and the next after that. Let's start with accept. This is actually the hardest. We need to accept that these threats are increasing and largely due to what we as humans have done to our environment, our planet. We are moving around the globe. We are moving into areas previously only inhabited by animals, and sometimes we are even moving those animals. Now this globalization, industrialization, migration has profound effects 
on both environment and climate. It leads to more floods, fires, more mosquito-borne disease, and more zoonotic disease, those transmitted from animals to humans. So think COVID, Ebola, AIDS, all animal to human. And so as cute as some of these animals are, and some are definitely cuter than others, maybe we don't want to be too close. Maybe we want to leave Mother Nature alone. So let's accept this reality. We then need to adapt, adapt our behaviors and adapt our approaches. And the great news is we can do this because we did this after 9-11 in the interest of national security and we barely even think about it anymore. Think of airports and TSA, three ounces of liquids, body scanners, cameras. Even our building codes have changed. Skyscrapers will never be the same again. These changes were hard at first, even annoying. I, for one, hate taking my shoes off on airport security lines because I never seem to have socks on. But I adapted, we adapted, and security got better. So we need to take the same approach for health security. And then we need to create more adaptable approaches. We need healthcare infrastructure that is flexible, that can adapt to a fire, a flood, or an outbreak. We need a response for all potential viruses, not just COVID. And we need software and technologies that are culturally adaptable, that can be converted into different languages and scaled across the world. And then we take these adaptable approaches and we act using the tools and technologies that we have today that may be most effective. And we have some great technologies out there. This is actually a cell phone app that tells you the risk of COVID in a specific area and even a specific building. Now, we use apps like this when we drive. They tell us traffic density. Red road is congested. Green, OK to go. This tells us disease density. Red, retreat. Not a good day for Disney World, a lot of virus. Green, OK to go. So we need to get these tools into the hands of the public, and we, the public, need to do this before an emergency hits. And speaking of go, why don't we go to the public? Why is healthcare infrastructure always fixed, monolithic, big buildings? Let's be nimble. Let's go to where events, outbreaks may occur, often in remote areas. So let me tell you about my favorite truck. This is no ordinary truck. This truck, or this container rather, holds a mobile laboratory which can be used off-grid anywhere in the world to diagnose disease. These units were developed by our team here at Baylor and transported to Liberia, West Africa for the last Ebola epidemic. Let's go inside. When this container expands, it produces a full service laboratory with all the equipment, state-of-the-art equipment that we have in our labs here in Houston, even advanced air handling systems to keep workers safe. And this is so important because this work is very challenging. Can you imagine being gowned, glass, masked, gloved, working in a remote part of the world with your hands in a giant glove box, in giant gloves, and this is not the glove box in your car, right? Think of those glass carnival games with all the little toys in it, but instead of maneuvering a little teddy bear, you're maneuvering a deadly virus. This is stressful work, challenging, and it requires a great deal of skill. So how do we train people to do this? Well, we thought about that. We created video games for the global good, and this is me playing one of those. Using virtual and augmented reality, we are able to create tools to train doctors, nurses, laboratory workers before they go into the field, and then to guide them hands-free using augmented reality when they are in the field. And this, by the way, is very different from the video games that many of us grew up with. This is not you know, Donkey Kong on a two-inch screen, which is what I used to play. This is a fully immersive experience. It is a real simulation, and it's great fun if you don't get motion sick. And this, by the way, is an approach that we learned from our colleagues here in Houston who work in the most remote environment imaginable, space. 
So NASA uses these tools to train astronauts before a mission and then to guide them, also hands-free, during a mission on basic tasks, whether it's repairing an antenna or even performing a medical procedure in space. And astronauts have to be hands-free because they have the biggest gloves of all. So we have these amazing tools and technologies today. Let's get them out there. And then the final A, this is the most important. We need to advocate, press our governments and local communities for change, for change in the practices that disrupt our environment in the animal kingdom and lead to these diseases, for change in healthcare, so we focus more on prevention and access in underserved areas. Because in this case, what helps others helps us. Human health, health security, transcends borders. It requires international cooperation, transparency, and the financial and political commitment to do this. So let's accept, adapt, act, advocate. Health threats are increasing, and partly due to what we have done, but we can adapt our behaviors, act to facilitate better preparation and prevention, and advocate for change. And doing this collectively, we can flex our imagination, prepare for the unforeseen, and ensure a safe, sustainable future for us all, keeping our socks on. Thank you so much.